Uh, it's not often that we have people that have reached this type of scientific level with us. Uh, if you look back during last year, Umeå University received a number of prestigious awards and prizes. And if you look on international recognition, we are now number seven in Scandinavia, number four or five in Sweden. And if you take uh, the amount of money that we get for producing this, uh, we can actually say that we are producing most of crown, which we are really proud of. It's a thing that we replaced, for example, the Kermit Springs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that Roger was at the Kermit Springs Institute a couple of days ago, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, at our annual ceremony this autumn, uh, I told the honorary doctors that we have really high expectations in them. Uh, we have, as you will see today, a uh, Nobel Prize winner as honorary doctor. We actually have one honorary doctor that is 400 kilometers above us just now. That's from our Christa Fugelsheim. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's scared them or not, but the, the editor-in-chief of Lancet, one of the most prestigious journals in the world, he wrote me a mail after and said that this was really tough to be an honorary doctor at Union University. There is no chance that he will go up in space. There is probably no chance that he will win the Nobel Prize. And he said during the dinner that when he looked back, he think that he got the medal for learning to swim when he was seven. <laughs> but he had nothing. He had nothing. <laughs> and of course, not everyone can meet the expectations to go up in space or be a Nobel Prize winner. And therefore, it's excellent to have this year's winner of the chemistry class with us. Uh, we have a plan for Umeå University, and the plan is to focus our research. Uh, we can't be all over the place. And why is it so? The reason for it is that if you compare Sweden with 9 million inhabitants, with China, for example, we must realize that we have to focus to be visible internationally. The university has gone through this program during the last year, and we identified 12 research areas that we will focus on. Three of these research areas is located in what we call the chemistry biology center. It's chemical biology, it's ecology, and it's plant sciences. And uh, today's speaker is uh, touching a subject that is really in the focus of what this KBC environment is aimed for. And uh, Professor Stefan Welton will here present both uh, today's speaker and the KBC project. He's, uh, Here it shows the, the location of KBC. So it's located, you see here, the, you have the Universum, the, and there's Alan Nordica where we're sitting. And KBC is actually this building that unites the old chemistry and physiology buildings uh, up here close to Ixu. is then uh, the possibility to integrate research in chemical biology in a manner that is unique to this field. And if you look at it right now, we have 400 employees with several technical platforms that are already colloquialized in one building company. So what you can do in right now already is proteomics and functional genomics, NMR, X-ray crystallography, chemometry, organic synthesis, and modification of biomolecules, chemical genetics, and high throughput screens. But then we have this 
extra uh, thing that the University is now planning, and that is to announce eight positions in five different areas of chemical, biology, molecular, environmental chemistry, technical chemistry, together with the forest industry in RCP, medical biochemistry, and plant biochemistry and plant cell biology. And in total, this means that the University is actually putting between 40 and 50 million crowns into to this uh, project. And I think that is definitely unique for, for Sweden at least uh, when it concerns chemistry. So returning to, to the honorary guest today, Roger, uh, there is of course many things you, you could say uh, about Roger. First of all, he's a very good friend and um, I'm so happy to have him here and I'm so happy for him that he received the Nobel Prize this year. If you look back, he started his career uh, at his bachelor degree at Harvard in 1967. He got a PhD at Stanford in 1972, and then he studied lateral diffusion of phospholipid membranes. And I say that because that was a basis for the technology that he later uh, invented and used to, to study the structure uh, of proteins, uh, and that is two-dimensional lipid layer crystallography. Then he went on to uh, study uh, to do his postdoctoral research at MRT in Cambridge, uh, and at that time he discovered the nucleosome that by itself could have been a Nobel Prize, I think, hasn't been yet. Uh, then he started as an assistant professor at Harvard in 1976 and went on to uh, Stanford, where he became a full professor in structural biology in 1978. He has received many prizes, you can see them here, the Harvard Prize from Technicon, the Australian Institute of Technology, ASBNB Merck Award in 2002, Astro Award in Cancer Research in 2002, the Grand Prix Charles Wilson Meyer Prize, 2003 in Bold here, we're, we're happy that we noticed before the Nobel Committee that we <laughs> <laughs> got an honorary doctorate in, at the University uh, three years ago. 2005, we got the General Motors Cancer Research Foundation and the uh, Alfred P. Stone Junior Park. And this year, of course, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So, I don't know if you, you can read it out from here, but for me, the uh, Roger really, uh, he's so broad in his science, so he really uh, can, can be included in all parts that, that KDC is doing research on. So, therefore, I think it's, it's a very, very good first choice for the, the first speaker in the, in the series that we're going to try to have in the KBC seminar. Uh, the KBC seminar so I welcome you, Roger, to give a, a seminar with the title The Molecular Basis for Eukaryotic Contribution. Thank you.